Now, if you really insist that uh, the model has to be predictive, okay, fine. Uh, let's do some prediction uh, based on this model. But then, uh, uh, using deterministic model to, to, to predict something and, and you have data and so on, it's not really uh, <coughs> uh, that reasonable. So what we can build in is uh, some kind of uncertainty or stochastic components into the model. So here, what I have is the usual logistic equation plus white noise. The white noise is given by this term here. So I have the drift. If you recognize this part, actually this is the, if I written it this way, it's in differential form, not differential equation, but differential form for the usual logistic equation. You might recognize this, that it looks like the Euler method. Yeah? And this part, we call it the drift. This is the deterministic portion. And this part, we call it the diffusion, and that's the stochastic component. Uh, <coughs> In order to solve a stochastic equation, differential equation like this will involve the use of Ito calculus, Stratonovich calculus, which is quite complex. Uh, however, we can um, find approximation to the um, solution using uh, numerical methods, and this is developed by Euler. Uh, the, this, this can be done by uh, using the euler mayurama method for SDE or, or, or stochastic DE, and it looks something like this. Uh, in this case, there is a parameter here, mu, which determines the amount of, uh, or, or the, the, the degree of uh, uh, uncertainty, if you like. Now, uh, I'm not going to go through the specifics of the model or, or the method of solution itself, but what I'm going to do is to show you how it can be written in, in, in a program in uh, MATLAB um, to at least demonstrate um, a model like this. Okay, this is MATLAB. Okay, so if the if mu is zero, that means that actually we go back to the logistic equation without the diffusion component, right? Because there's mu multiplied by the diffusion. So uh, let's see what happens. Okay, this is what happens if mu is zero. This is what we have uh, obtained, I think roughly what we have obtained before for, for, for mu equals to zero. And uh, uh, this number of paths, basically we are taking uh, uh, Brownian paths uh, to estimate our W, okay? W represents the, the uh, winner process. And we can try to um, say, put, let's say, 500 paths and uh, have some um, level of uh, uncertainty in our model, in the diffusion component, and see what happens. <coughs> okay, it takes a while. And now you, you find that uh, it's slightly different from the usual logistic solution. Uh, and, and you find that it's not so, the, the curve is not so smooth uh, after a while. I mean, this is expected because of st stochastic nature of the model. Now, if I were to click again the same, using the same set of parameters, 500 paths, uh, mu equals to 5, I may get a different uh, solution, okay? slightly different, and so on. And I can go on, and each time, uh, um, Chances are that I'll get a different, slightly different kind of solution. And this is uh, the nature of uh, stochastic modeling. There's uncertainty involved. <coughs> Let me conclude. Uh, I think uh, mathematical modeling experience, uh, experiences can be uh, made um, realistic and relevant in a classroom if we choose examples and situations and, 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 and so on or even data which are real and um, relevant. And perhaps um, the example that I show you, for example, uh, uh, the SARS outbreak, um, uh, might strike a chord with your students because uh, it is something that they are familiar with, hopefully, and they are aware of. Okay? So hopefully that raises a level of motivation for your students to, to really uh, experience mathematical modeling in real life. Um, <coughs> Now, uh, we started off by saying that in mathematical modeling, we try to uh, find a solution to a real-life problem. Uh, but you notice that uh, after doing all the modeling and so on, we don't really solve any problem, right? 
I mean, okay, you have this nice curve that fit the data for, for the SARS outbreak, so what? Does it mean that we wouldn't get the, uh, the disease anymore? No, it doesn't solve that problem. But I think, uh, <clears throat> more importantly, um, in, 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 as far as the classroom is concerned, um, the experience can be mathematically enriching, and also um, the, the, the level of appreciation for uh, how mathematical modeling can be used to understand a problem. Sometimes understanding a real-life problem is good enough. Uh, finally, I hope you also realize that at least in this talk, I've been using a lot of technology <laughs> and, uh, to solve the problems. And um, I think in, in, in some sense, um, uh, for real-life mathematical modeling, technology is very crucial. All right? And it plays a very important role in making the mathematics a little bit more reachable. Um, <coughs> to students and to ourselves. Now, I'd like to conclude with another story, and in, for this story, I need some props. So please bear with me for a while. I think I, I've said before that, uh, in my introduction, that uh, <coughs> I used to teach in a junior college for a few years uh, before I went for further studies. And... Uh, <coughs> I used to teach the uh, uh, mechanics part of further maths, further mathematics. Nowadays, there's no more further maths, there's no more mechanics. But in my first lesson, this is what I usually do to my students. I say you have, you know, they've all had some idea of ST graph, VT graph. So this is what I say to them. This is an object, this is a particle. Okay? And I'm going to... Uh, impart some motion to this particular particle and I want them to sketch for me the ST graph and the VT graph. So I start with something very simple like this. Huh? Very easy. So they all sketch. Fine. Now the next one. ST graph and VT graph for this motion. Still not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Now the next one. ST graph and VT graph for this. And not so easy because when it hits this, what happens? And then I have another one which I can't demonstrate in this room because the ceiling is a bit high. <laughs> I would say ST graph and VT graph where I throw the ball and hit the ceiling and comes bounce, bouncing back to me. And I have yet another one I use uh, plasticine. ST graph and VT graph where I throw the plasticine and get stuck up there. <laughs> And my last one would be this. <coughs> Try and sketch. <coughs> the ST graph and VT graph for this. Oh, you didn't see that, right? Let me do again. <laughs> That's not good, right? Okay, let me try it one more time. Make sure you um, pay attention and then sketch the ST graph and VT graph for this one. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Let's try again. So you see, every time I do it, it's slightly different, right? right? Every time I do it, it's different. <laughs> so my point is this. I'm going to make a statement now. I hope it's not too uh, controversial. Of course, afterwards, I have to pick up all the things. Uh, the statement is this. The problems that I set using the tennis ball, falls under the category problem-solving. The last one is mathematical modeling. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> I'm chairing this, so any questions? <laughs> Uh, I, was, I was told that usually when the talk is very good, there are no questions, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>